Welcome back, everybody, to Winners Finals. We have Crush Soda versus Fiesta. I gotta say, I am I'm still Genie, and I'm still joined by Soov. And Soov, this huh? is an insane, insane matchup we have in our Winners Finals. Oh yeah, I mean, considering this is who is the dominant force and who is going into guaranteed if, like first second, like this is like we we're talking about this like this is something you can see at like uh, any major any remotely major and this is insane considering especially that fiesta hasn't dropped a single map they haven't lost a single map out of this run so far and crush soda's only dropped one so like both of these teams are playing outside of their minds in addition to the fact that they're in the winners finals this is just a wild place to be right now yeah it's i gotta say it's kind of kind of crazy and kind of saucy and i absolutely love it we know that crush soda is prepping for packs they want they want to win packs they want to packs isn't really like the na championships but we haven't had an na champ championship yeah, by Nintendo in years so it it feels like it's gonna be that so yeah um yeah when you they, look at they it. need to test like this if they want to be take it to starburst because i know starburst is everyone knows who starburst is you kind of yeah. want crush soda to look good in these matches if not beat if i mean not that's beat, yeah, yeah. That's the thing, right? Is like this is really Crush Soda's testing ground to make sure they're ready for those bigger matches. So, like, realistically, this is so important, especially taking off uh, maps from Fiesta. So, not having to go down and play to get into the finals would be a huge, huge step for them. Uh, the question mark is how much prepared, how prepared are they for this? And it is going to be triple, it's going to be triple sploosh uh, versus the two and two. And I mean, we saw how aggressive that triple sploosh was on the last map from Fiesta, and I had to be terrified. Two, uh, two ninja squids also worth noting. So really, just have to keep your eye out of them because it could be any number of players here. Look how aggressive that is! Holy crap! People, people are saying, "Oh, we've got, we've got tri shakes now. We've got zookas, which can shut things down, shut crabs down." And look at, we're still here. We haven't moved. We haven't nope. moved an inch. Nope. No reason to. I mean, when you when you are playing aggressively out of your mind like Fiesta and you're just feeling yourselves, like there's no reason not to. They will finally lose control, though. As it looks like the aggression finally caught up to them. I mean, they still haven't lost. <laughs> they still haven't lost control yet here. They no. will take it back. And they managed to hold that out and just continue to get pressure. Like, yeah, that's the thing is this Fiesta team is playing so aggressively. Look at how just, just they are keeping control of every single space and playing up to. You can see it just how close they're keeping them in spawn. Uh, just the map control from the side of Fiesta itself is insane, and then just rotating those crabs has just been so powerful. Goss just absolutely diced by the Splatana Stamper, and Thunder as well. The crab tank gets, gets chipped out and gone again. There's like, under 30 ticks left on the zone. Fiesta's been proving to be just way better than Crush Soda, and this is Crush Soda, top four yeah. team in NA. This, this is, is absolutely is, insane. They're trying to get in the zone. They have to paint it because it's going to be tight. The jumps are going to be coming in close for Fiesta. Crush Soda, they are going to be in a crab. The crab thunder trying to fight it, trying to paint that zone. The Zipcaster is out, going to be splitting that crab, no. and the zone is capped for Fiesta again. There's no one that's able to contest this from Crush Soda. Even though they are, they just they can't win the fights. They have to paint the zone. They have to do too much. And Fiesta, they're putting on a clinic. They're putting on a show. The Booyah Bomb's coming out to neutralize it, and they're oh, able finally. to get the cap at the final hour, but at what cost? Every single member is down, if not jumping out. Wow, that is... I mean, they managed to get the flip. That's the important thing, right? Is that they managed to buy themselves the time. Now they still have to wear this down, but that was a dominant look out of Fiesta. They just controlled absolutely every single space and knew exactly who to harass at the right moments. Crush Soda really needs to win these 1v1s and just keep themselves open and communicating to find these targets. You can see on that flank is that Sultanus and Emperor, and they have just been finding value on that flank uncontested. My goodness. And again, Crush Soda, they have to get the zone pretty boil right here or right now if they fall in this fight there's no time left they have to win this to stay alive in this game one Kyo's on his left side is gonna get taken out by three thunder is on this left side with the crab tank trying to stay alive just rolling around in ball form they have to remember they have to go to the words of zone they have to neutralize the zone only six ticks left before it is all but over and they have to they have to find a way to neutralize it and here and now they do all the way down to one and cap oh it again at the final possible hour again 160 ticks genie was how was, was uh, that was 160 ticks that came through on that so far i mean fiesta it has to be feeling themselves they just have to know that they they can win this and they have to be feeling good after that they just need to get it back and clear through the last minute of this and now two down crush soda not looking like they're gonna hold on to this much longer here yeah, my goodness, you use a crab tank and are forced to be in ball form just because a zip caster is standing around you. I think that Dress Soda should have an opportunity to get back in here, with, especially with three down. They just can't die to the final member. Who gets two when they're dying breath? Wow. 
great, great pull up. Gus surviving and having that crab just to maintain that, you mean that they'll get this through. It did flip, but even with that in mind, you know, all the resources continue to get spent on each of these fights, but that flanker way deep is really full, pulling so much attention, and that's been so crucial for Fiesta here, just keeping them checking and keeping their heads on a swivel. And Kyo's gonna be going down in an aggressive position, not able to find anything that he probably wanted in that fight in Fiesta. It was just so easy for them. They said, let's just take the zone back, and that's exactly what happens. Crush Soda's had to work so darn hard to get in every time they... I mean, the, the problem is that Crush Soda has just been back boxed into a corner here, right? They really can't seem to buy themselves out, and now that they're finding and playing these side alleyways to buy the space back, I mean, they're still getting punished for it, but it's their only real shot to get out here and contest this, because, again, Fiesta, I mean, it's it's 200. This has been 200 ticks. Yeah, they've, they've just cleared 200. That's insanity. And that's going to be game. There's no wow. possible way you can get back into it. Just Crush Soda, just falling one by one in Fiesta. This is the team that hasn't dropped a game in the tournament, and this wow. is a big measuring stick. Yeah, this is a team that is trying to be the next NA champions, and they just absolutely throttled them. I, I, I have to wonder if this just comes down to what has been happening in scrims at this point, because uh, while there are moments of success and glory for crush soda we did see them get two two big really important flips those moments have just been too and far few and few and far between uh for anybody to really be content with it like they looked good against any other team they that probably would have been a success but just uh, fiesta has just been so dominant in controlling the angles here yeah I, i'm looking towards this tower control game so and i gotta say we've been seeing fiesta play the splashes, playing the split on a stamper, playing the true hard current meta. I want to see if they've put that 96 scale in here because I want to see if that it is just, they believe it's that strong on tower control. That splash wall Kraken is just better than that extra little bit of a splash. Cause I know in zones, it definitely is yeah. not yeah. at all, not even close. It's too slow, but on a slower mode, a way slower mode like tower control, which has a fixed path and a fixed speed that it can go i wonder if they pull that thing back out i i have to feel like they they do short of them just knowing something that we don't and sort of something being in the meta that we don't uh i i feel like it's just pretty given that like as long as you have a kraken up and control the tower it's just free push for at least a little bit you used to just shovel shovel as many crabs as you could onto it but i mean why do that when you just have an unkillable monster that you can put on there and ride it for you i i do wonder what crush soda does to adapt to this because i have to assume they are bringing in a kraken of their own it's probably going to be the gallon also and just giving that in my mind uh still makes me wonder how does crush soda play against the aggressive nature that Fiesta is bringing because you can still get very aggressive with a gallon it just really requires you to be a little bit more safe and to be a little bit more aware of your special usage so uh it's I mean I have to assume they do the question mark is do they feel they even need to at this point mm -hmm. I I'm I'm like I'm also going to look forward towards the later end of the maps that we have here because I know it's going to be actually hold up we got a game are we gonna even see? We're, we're going in. That? I didn't know how much time we had to stall here. And yeah, we are gonna be having that gal. Okay, the gallons. That is that is very, very interesting. And Kale's gonna be playing the Tri Slosher Nouveau. That tactic cooler. Interesting to see them swap um see him swap off of the machine. Go to a tactic cooler. No booyah bomb. Tactic cooler on power gear. Definitely not his best one. No, I think this is an interesting one because when you look at the the sloshing machine kits, this is the, always the one that people look at. It is a very aggressive slayer, uh, especially when you look at what it can do in the team play and just being able to respond quick, especially if you are getting picked a lot, which we've seen out of Crush Soda. It's important. Like this, this could be a difference maker here. Yeah, and we're gonna have to be seeing that Kraken just kind of retreat a bit, and they won't won't be able to get far. Ghost shuts them down. This is actually, I feel like Crush Soda's biggest lead they've had all all game. It's insane to say that. Oh yeah, I mean, this is definitely the best they've looked in a lot of time. Uh, I mean, they didn't find the first pick in the last fight, but they are finding themselves at least some pressure. They almost took a lead too. Still is really, really important for them because this is still open and finally the picks come in to a piece, but there's still really not much. The, the Gallon continues to live though, and that's the thing that I'm looking at here is that the Gallon continues to live and build Kraken, and that is dangerous because the longer and closer that gets to build, it means it's harder for Crush Soda to really push push here. Yeah, but here we go. They're just trying to ride this tower. How much more can they get through? Can they get through this checkpoint? This would be clutch, and they do. Crush Soda, they get their first lead in this series, and they also 
getting like a good first checkpoint broken, and it didn't cost them all, yeah. too too much. It actually seems to cost them all of it now. Yeah, the counterpoint now coming in from Fiesta though is that they have three specials up. The crab, one crab falls though, so that's a huge advantage for them. Keo does fall down in the middle though, so I mean the picks do eventually fall for Fiesta, and a great defense out of Crush Soda uh, surviving that. That actually says a lot for Crush Soda here. They are looking dominant on this mode. This looks like a mode they're better prepared for now that you've moved Fiesta off their comfort zone and, and the inability to play aggressive. Uh, that's a huge step forward for them. We're going to see Keo popping that tactical and getting it, that drink and running. Knowing that he has an extra life and every trade that he finds will be completely in his favor. As we see the Splatana Stamper goes in and gets wave off the tower. Thunder and Ghost are going to try and push up with that as Keo is able to get back in with that jump. we got to watch out because this Kraken is ready. It can shut any, any of the push down for Crush Soda at any moment they want to pop it. I mean, it, it has to kind of, it had to kind of come before that lead got swapped back, but it's, you know, they'll save it for this push here. So now that they have, they're just going to start looking for individual picks, try to find an advantage and spend everything just to get the space they had back. They will, in fact, use it just to try to buy themselves out of this. And that's, you know, this isn't the uh, dominant force that we were seeing out of Fiesta. So really, Crush Shota finding the adaption and is giving them quite a run for their money here, just based on these weapon changes alone. Got to, got to give it to them. That's an NA team for you is that adaption we were looking for. Yeah, it, it's so so entertaining to watch. We've got we've got both teams just trying to scrap it out on this lower left side over by the ink rail. Zipcaster is going to be going in, and two oh, spots are going to be found. Great uh, combination there. We have Crush Soda again, not able, not relinquishing too much of the space. They have control of that left block, and it's something that they've been like, able to control for well over a minute. now. I mean, that's something that's been their kind of go to point, right? Is just looking, is just saying, look, we have control. Let's just control and keep the cart exactly in where we need to be, and that should be fine. Kraken now out with two down means that this cart will eventually start to roll for Fiesta, though. Uh, so Crush Soda has to come in and play aggressively here. There's only one crab up for Fiesta to really hold this space on. And now that the fight's moving elsewhere, that's they need to bring it back to mid here. They can't afford to get distracted. No, they can't. And with the tri checks, they are going to be out. They're going to try and make space on tower, but they won't do enough. Crush Soda, they're able to get back in and probably find some of these spots that are all around that backside of that left side uh, block that we see. Oh, Thunder goes down, and so does Wave. Ghost will most likely follow that up extremely quickly, leaving just Keo to try and stop this. And oh, they, okay, Keo's going to get wow. absolutely obliterated. I mean, now this is the moment for Fiesta to take that space forward, and they will slowly start to do that. And now they've, they've gotten the lead back, Genie. I mean, this is the roughest spot for them to be in if you're Crush Soda. You were you were in the spot, you were feeling yourselves, you had your position, but you got forced out, and now you have to make this run back from under a minute. It has to be almost a perfect run going into this last bit. It could be, and it, at least they were able to defend that checkpoint. They have not given up that second checkpoint. It's going to be difficult, though. I'm so worried because we're one Kraken away. I don't see a tri strike. The Booyah Bomb can push off the Kraken for a little bit, but Three not like the tri strike. Three specials up for Soda means that there is at least some firepower. They know they have a little bit of space they can give up on the cart, but they are taking these angles and trying to get in their tri strikes and doesn't find anything, but it's 15 on the clock, Genie, and no picks through yet. No, actually, we have trades out back and forth, but Kyo's back faster with that tactic cooler buff. Ghost is going to be in front of that tower, but who's going to be able to go back on it? Somebody There's has no to get one there. back. The there. picks were made. Crush Soda has to go. Can Wave get on it? Yes, Wave gets on it, but at what cost? The Here comes up. the Kraken, and I don't think Wave's going to be able to live through that, nor will Keo. No. That was, again, that's the kind of difference maker in the Kraken we were looking at, right, is just to be able to say, just to be able to shut down any pushes immediately just by taking that space, and uh, it's unfortunate because Crush Soda really did have it there for a few moments. They were looking very, very poised to take it, but a couple of those backline picks that were really defending the cart just got made, and... Unfortunately, it threw out their plans uh, it just to the most it could have. Uh, I mean, it's match point now. Crush Soda now will have to win or go and play down. And whew, I mean, I don't want to fall to the losers bracket if I'm them. There are so many talented teams down there, especially losing down to Fiesta. Uh, it does give you a little bit of wiggle room, but it's it's not a it's not a place you want to have to think about falling to. No, you don't want to have to win the, those extra sets. You don't have to get that reverse sweep or that um that bracket uh, bracket reset. And I gotta say, Kimmy Chun's their their gal was so entertaining to watch. Haven't seen yeah like I haven't seen a strong ninety six gal since Splatoon one. It's and it's so refreshing to see that weapon because yeah. it's something that I always used to like uh, love. Its idea of its play style, that that range that that craziness yeah. that's been going on. So it's it's been so nice to see. I do have to say, I think it's going to go back in the pocket. 
until game oh, yeah. five, if that. Maybe maybe we see it again in Clan Blitz, but we won't see it on Surgeon Rainmaker. I can almost no. guarantee it that. No, no, no. That's that's to me. I, I view that Kraken as strictly a Rainmaker and maybe Clan Blitz pick. Like that's a pocket pick that you swap in off your player, and I think that that actually is an indicator of a little bit of a healthy meta, right? Is just those individual picks that come in for particular maps modes gives me a lot. But again, on Clan Blitz, like. Fiesta just brings out triple sploosh plus uh, Splatana, and I'm I'm concerned because that is such an aggressive comp that Crush Soda has been struggling to to kind of deal with. Right, Crush Soda has been able to hold their ground. They've been able to win these fights in these last couple this last map, but the problem is that they haven't necessarily been capitalizing and taking the space like once they find their up two, up three, and really giving themselves that advantage. So uh, if Fiesta continues to push aggressively like that, I, I fear for Crush Soda in this winner's bracket. I completely agree with you there. And I'm I'm just looking forward for Crush Soda. Like, how are they going to... If they're playing like this against Fiesta, if they're breaking like this, what are they going <sighs> to do against Starburst at PAX? Like, how yeah. are they how are they going to be able to keep up with, with them? I know, I know Starburst has their own narratives, but... You want to see Crush Soda look like they did in that tower control game for this next this upcoming remake game. And if if they're not, I'm 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 worried. But they there's always more time in the loser's bracket. There's more time to recuperate and rethink. And we're going to be actually seeing a squeezer come out on Rainmaker. Okay, interesting. I mean, that's a little more uh, try. That's a little more uh, bazooka power out of it. A little bit. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's bazooka. That's interesting i guess we're favoring a little bit more range out of that and i don't hate that take it is again like one of those odd kind of picks you swap in uh but considering they've given up most of their crab power tells me that they aren't playing a long game they're going to try to play a fast and effective game here and i do like that out of fiesta and fiesta they, they've gone pretty much everyone down this plasma stampers just on the low ground this rainmaker on being carried by wave will 100 be able to be dunked and how close is kill to that that all important uh special because if you can get those those sodas down those drinks you can make this rainmaker go extremely fast especially with this the, the, he finds one i mean that's huge he, he finds one and i mean the rainmaker is going to stall out he will eventually get forced out of there now that the crossfire has come in but realistically keo is close he doesn't he gets punished out of it and i mean this is probably not going to make much more progress here they're down one this is a bit of a, a tumultuous uh move they will get it to 37 and that's a, it's, in, it's in a tough spot for them but this is still good for them this means that it's harder for fiesta to get it out short of just committing it into the void yeah 30 37 is actually kind of kind of nice little push here as we see keo in mid how many can keo find only one that's a little bit devastating because keo i know Probably can't himself for that one because he, he definitely had a lot more available to him in the situation. I mean, yeah, but look at how Fiesta just aggressively takes these. They took multiple angles and just try to figure out where do they need to go. They'll lose it here. But that split up and just realization that, look, we can win 1v1s and let's just feel comfortable on that. They'll get this slam dunk, it looks like, here. They're just kind of waiting for the rest of the the space to come in. But, I mean, they just feel so comfortable in this. They feel like they have control. And I, as I say that, Crush Soda does finally put their foot down and they'll buy it back here. They managed to get the stop, and that's so crucial. This grab tank on the high round. It's trying to stay alive, but they see that the Splash is trying to pressure them out. Splash is able to actually kind of like dodge and flip their way around Fiesta. They haven't been able to break that first checkpoint. It, it's something that they, they would like to get done quickly. But with the members being traded out so frequently, both sides actually not being traded out at all now. Uh, advantage. This, this should be an opportunity for them to go. I mean, they don't have far to go. They just need to make sure they can get it in. They'll get the slam dunk. Then that'll be the first of that. It'll probably get stalled out here a little bit. Boogie Bomb comes in to help break it, but I mean, now down one, Fiesta's probably likely to lose this. No, they do have the Squeezer Zuka up, but I don't think it's going to get much value here. It's probably going to be easier contested the high grounds later. Yeah, I I kind of like to play Fiesta just to hold back and get that checkpoint. Now they know that yeah. they can push anywhere they want at any speed that they want, not worrying about going to a specific location on the map to get that Rainmaker done. It, it's forced uh, Crush Soda so darn far back as we see the Squeezer going for an extremely aggressive wow, play. Aggressive. Going up on the spinner and it's going to be absolutely obliterated by some burst bombs. I mean, it was an aggressive play, but that's how they've played. They played aggressively and they played these flank angles. So uh, keeping that in mind has worked towards their favor. Crush Soda fighting from behind now under two. They'll force the crab out here. And I don't think that may be a great shot on the third. So now they'll finally maybe get some more space. They just need to play defensively here, though, Genie. If they can do that, they will hold this and take a lead off of our current uh, undefeated. Yeah, that, that would be a big game to take off. But I don't think they can play defensively. They have, they've been playing aggressively and taking away the space. And that's how they've been winning this game. So the moment I feel like the moment that they give up any any of that gas pedal that they've, they've been pushing, it could be 
could be lights out in this series. I mean, you can play aggressively and also defensively. Like you said, just not give up the space. Just just keep themselves in control of the, of the Rainmaker and keeping themselves in a great position. But that, that does push it into a worse spot uh, for Fiesta. So now, again, just now they have this high ground in their control. So if they choose to press forward and continue to play that way, they should be able to keep it in a position where they can control. Yeah, they can't go down, too many people down here. The KO's falling. If Thunder doesn't get out here safely, that would be devastating. But at least Thunder is able to get out alive in Fiesta. They've lost their machine way deep in no man's land. The Rainmaker is not being protected at all, and the Splatana Stamper falling as well. This is uh, looking good in the final minute here for Crush Soda. I mean, this is this is what we had hoped to see, right? Is just this this counter this aggression and really play into these kinds of changes. I think part of this that might actually be working for them is the squeezer pick was an interesting take. It was an aggressive pick that maybe we're just not ready for dunking down to one crab yet. Uh, but as long as they maintain control of the rainmaker, they're just looking for an opening, and I think they found one on that side flank if they can win this. Ooh, Kyo! I see Kyo going for a little bit of a hero play. Tries to go for the rainmaker. I don't know, Kyo, like. Whipped his chance here, because that Rainmaker is going, going really deep. Will oh, they be able wow. to stop it on Crush Soda? Yes, they do. Luckily, get the shots in when they needed it most, and that should be uh, a, a delayed wipe because the machine, the machine is way, way, way back. And that, that'll be they game. way back. Yeah. No, that's game. That, that was a great, great stop in the last minute. Uh, Fiesta just kind of waiting and buying the time for the final way through. Uh, it never really showed up, though, so kudos to Crush Soda for really keeping control of that space and keeping their paint up, uh, because now this is, a, this is a turnaround point. Like, this is this is the start of the reverse sweep. They finally took a map off of the undefeated team, and that is a good, good start to keep yourselves alive here. Now the question mark is, uh, in the coming maps, how do you now deal with what they're going to learn from this? Because we're in Clams, fourth new mode. I mean... I have to assume Fiesta just brings back triple spl triple sploosh with a sword with Splatana. Like it was a dominant force for them in these first couple games, and I don't see them a uh, reason not to go back to that. Yeah, I I actually completely agree with you there. Um, top level, this this is the elite elite of top level right here that we have. So the jump to Kraken uh, that works in all your ranked games probably is not necessary <laughs> here. Um, they know how to do that just with their own sheer muscle and sheer willpower. And you can just do it with a crab tank. It just gets I mean, yeah. Across. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there's any number of ways to do it, and I, I agree with you. I don't think it's, I don't think it's cracking time. I think it's just going to be back to more crabs. But I think the other thing that uh, gives me a question mark that I, I, I wonder if maybe this was just experimenting on the side of Fiesta, considering how they might have been feeling. But, like, that squeezer pick makes sense but also still feels a little awkward that might have been just a personal choice on them that maybe backfired so uh, i think this is going to force them to just say look like we want to come out on top here we want to make sure we win this no more shenanigans back to what is meta and i really do think that like crush soda might have angered the kraken the, on themselves on this on this win yeah and i want to give a quick update um thanks for pro char for streaming uh some of these yeah, other matches out. on his own stream but seafoam 2-1 graveyard shift in our losers round. So Seafoam's going to be moving uh, moving on, and that's, honestly, for Seafoam, that's a massive win. That's, that's huge. Um, that's huge. Yeah, I know uh, Coach, Coach K-Bot's going to be really, uh, going to be proud of proud of his crew for that one, but, um, you know, K Coach yeah. K-Bot, it can always, can always be a tough coach, as he's I mean, a better coach. Yeah, I mean he's he's obviously good, and and let's not shout out Seafoam. I mean Seafoam took third at the last minor over at Tropic Throwdown, but I mean now when you think about this, uh, the loser of this match goes to play Seafoam, and uh, it's no, they, 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 well Seafoam's got to go through like all either Squid and Good or New Meta or Robbie and oh Hobbit. that's right I didn't even see that. Oh, I thought that other when there's, I played. no yeah, there's okay. so there's many no threats down there oh okay oh like, wow okay yeah lots of threats oh, lots geez. of action going on. and we are gonna be seeing I'm, that Gal come back. Uh, yeah, Keo picking up the slosher again. I mean, I do think it was a good look. They are going to play the Kraken. Yeah, okay. I guess they value it enough uh, in their play. And considering the rest of this comp does work aggressively, I don't hate it. I'm really just keeping an eye now on Keo again. Uh, I mean, I really want to see more. Uh, can I want to see more value out of it? I think there's definitely something to be had for that machine. And I think that the slosher, uh, with the right amount of support, can really enable him to slay and take advantage of these high grounds. Yeah. The, the Trisocial Tacticaler, though, on this on Clam is going to be honestly insane. Keeping your special and keeping the speed up on Clam Blitz, even if you fall, is 
honestly crazy. The like, KO's gonna be punished so aggressive for that extremely aggressive positioning. Fiesta, you can't catch a team like that sleeping. No, you'll never be able to catch a team that like that. It is imp really important, as we all know, to control these high grounds. And uh, I mean, that 3v1 was just brutal. But uh, again, like, look at how quickly Fiesta just takes these high grounds and they manage to manipulate and move the ball, the the, the super climb. Like, it's just in a position they're ready to score. They realize, I, I mean, is it going to fall? I think, I guess it will. But uh, like, just look how quickly they moved and took that high ground and took the space they were looking for. So uh, not a successful attempt there. But I mean, you can see how qu quickly and effectively they are trying to take these spaces going into these pushes i mean 14 clams still on their side though that's huge yeah this is this is actually really good for crush dota they're able to survive a little bit of fiesta's onslaught there allowing them allowing themselves to stay stay in this match because you don't want to give up a big lead in clam list, and i know that can happen really quickly and against a, a team that can just jump in at any time with three power clams with kraken you always have to have a little bit of advantage as we do see the power clam going around for a little bit of a flank and it goes down before it can get to the basket that is an unfortunate positioning for Fiesta. I'm just missing that one. I mean, they, they realized that it didn't make it. They just got out with their other power climb in hand, and I think that was the right call. 3v1 will get punished eventually, and they will get out with a clam, which is a bit unfortunate. Crusoe didn't really need to capitalize on it, but still a good hold nonetheless. Now two down. I mean, this is Fiesta's time to go. I think they sense the blood in the ink. Yeah, they do, and they got some more splats to their name. I believe the gal's going to go on the right side. They're going to have the power climb chucked, and the power their Crusoe. Kraken is going to get shut down. Thunder. Bring down the hammer exactly when they needed it, or else those, that power club would have easily made it to the basket. Yeah, again, this high ground control is so important, and it's really uh, difficult to dislodge some of these teams, especially these crabs and these mid range guns. Great shot, wow. Uh, just to be able to do that. Like, the one thing that hasn't come through for Fiesta, we haven't seen any Krakens come up yet, and that's kind of been the thing, I think the thing they're waiting on. They haven't been able to build it. Uh, so, really, once they get a Kraken up, I'm going to be keeping an eye out for it, because that is going to be their contest. But meanwhile, Crush Soda is the aggressor here, and they've, they're trying to push so hard on this high ground right now. It, they just need Ooh, to find thunder. someone. Where is Thunder going? Thunder just went rolled all the way underneath the power climb. Basket, and they've done such a good job. They've gotten Wave in. Thunder's able to get the, some more splats. Kyo's falling around. But that's a-okay. -okay. Wave got the power climb in, and they got some more power climb. Huge pick. Climb coming in. Goss is coming around from the top side. Thunder trying to create some more space. There aren't too many climbs on the map where they can pick them up. They've got one more climb to their name on the side of Crash Soda. But they're getting the spots on Fiesta. And that's really important. They should be able to get some more objective points here, but they just haven't. There's no one in, and I don't think that basket will stay open long enough. No, it's not, and I think they recognize it too. 53 is still nothing to scoff at. That's a pretty big lead, considering how long it took to get to that push. Half the time of this map was done, and I mean, they continue to hold this space pretty aggressively, so now that Crush Soda has this uh, this advantage here, uh, they just need to make sure they get the stop. They already have another clam up. They just need to get themselves into position and control this high ground again and find those early picks. Once they do two clams up, they can continue to keep this rolling and just build a lead. Yeah, We are under a minute, uh, just over a minute remaining, so if too much space is caused by this this crab tank, and three power clams are collected from Fiesta. One Kraken push. Oh, that's both down. Yeah, one Kraken push will go for it. And actually, I'm gonna see. I think we're gonna see a Kraken go on the right side. No, the gal is gone. That's three down on the side of Fiesta, but two gone as well on the side of Crush Soda. There is gonna be a technicaler at the ready though, so this should allow Wave to at least play a little bit more aggressively. It should, but the the key thing I think that Crush Soda has been doing has been keeping an eye on that Gallon and just denying it the specials that it should have had. Again, it's a first pick all the time. That Gallon continues to fall, and that has been a key to their success. So really great player awareness on the side of Crush Soda to know that this is the key target we need to focus out, and they continue to do so. It's so huge. Crab Tank is out from Fiesta. We have just over 30 seconds remaining. A lot of members of Crush Soda are scattered very sporadically across the map. They are able to get a splat on one of the splashes, and the other splash falls as well. There's just going to be a power... There's two power cubs alive for Fiesta. For Crush Soda, they have so much control mid. I, I feel like it's going to have to come down to a Hail Mary. It's going to come down to a Hail Mary, but the other part, important part is they're going to need three clams to even consider getting this win. It'll tick to overtime, but they oh. need a push now. They lose the Gallon early, and that is a huge key. That's two down. This does not look good for Fiesta. Two down and, and only one special. This, I think this is over, Genie. Yeah, the Gal's going to jump in here, but there's nothing left. Kiel's in their back line, and there there's goes Wade the, with the power climb into the basket. Yep, and yeah, it's that's going to be Crush Soda coming back in this series, going down... 2-0 and bring it back to a game five. I'm extremely impressed. That's That was incredibly good teamwork out of Crush Soda. Again, just recognizing their win condition and being able to stifle it was so important. Uh, I mean, 
you, you know, we expect this for, though, right? Like this is your PAX champion. These are PAX players. These are the best in NA and they are absolutely coming out to NA turf and saying, look, we will not be bullied on our own weekly. We are going to fight and play ourselves into the finals. So, uh, I mean, now it's, now it's up match point. This is likely actually to be something we see again in this finals, uh, possibly as we go to game five back on tower control though. I mean, if you're Chris Sully, you're feeling pretty good because this is that's probably the comp you're going to see. That's kind of similar, basically, to the comp we saw out of map two. And granted, you might not have been prepared for it, but you definitely are right now. Yeah, it's it was very close. We have to remember the zones game was not. It was a it was a stomp. Crush Soto got yeah. obliterated. They they had no fizzle. There was nothing there. The tower control game, they had a lot of life. They were still recovering from the the fatal wounds that were given to them in that game one, but they had life. The next two games. They look pretty strong. I'm I'm worried that the momentum is gone from Fiesta. It's not like, oh, it's late night for JP. It's actually early morning. It's um approaching uh approaching it's approaching noon noon time, I think. Yeah. Um uh, for, for Japan. So it's it, it's it's morning. They they should be waking up now. Yeah, but they got up early for this, and especially given what they've like how long we've been here, it's been a good three, four hours, the mental that kind of comes with these kinds of longer events, especially at odd times, can weigh on you. That said, I don't think either team's out of this. I think the question mark just becomes, now, how does Fiesta turn around and counter this? Because we've kind of got their their comp on red now, and so does Crush Soda. So with that in mind, Fiesta needs to pull out something from their sleeve to really keep Crush Soda in check going into this last round. I mean, Mart is... Mart is pretty vertical. Mart has a lot of weird angles and side flanks you can take. So uh, controlling these high grounds is going to be so much more difficult. And that is going to be harder uh, with that gallon, too, if you give up the slot for it. I have to say the Sloshers on, on Mako, it's of all the maps that we've had here in the series, I feel like Charles Slosher does the best on Mako. So putting, yeah. keeping Kyo on that, it's it's just gotten better as, as the maps maps have gone on, honestly. And um, there's so many angles that you can use that fizzy bomb, the double fizzy bomb plus uh, plus those bursts coming out of uh, Crush Soda. They they should have the advantage on, in my opinion. They have the momentum and they should have the advantage. It's up to Fiesta now. I can't believe just I'm saying this, but our undefeated team is looking looking like they could uh, easily easily drop down now, and they've already lost two matches. I mean, yeah, yeah. Goliath is looking pretty beatable right now, and we'll see pretty much the same comps. We'll see double smoosh on the side of Crush Soda, though. Uh, so I do, I do like this though. I do think this is a team that really can play now against the vertical uh, in the elements. So I'm really keeping an eye again, just keeping an eye on that gallon out of Fiesta. Uh, you know, that's going to be kind of the difference maker across both of these teams. Oh, two down though. Ooh. Yeah, Fiesta. They actually have a, a Neo splash, which means that they have that tri strike available to them in this match at any point that they they have it ready and charged up this first checkpoint is looking mighty fine for fiesta they should be able to get down crab tank has made all that space and gotten all that control for them this goss is just kind of getting plastered on this right side by burst bombs i mean yeah but they are taking so much space like you said uh it's pretty much a free roll and you can see the kraken just spinning just knowing like look i'm pretty much uncontestable we've taken the space already they're in spawn and again thunder falls like look at how deep they are already what? fiesta is not having it no, Fiesta is having an actual party again. They are having a true and honest Fiesta here. All the way down to the third checkpoint with all, wow. like under a minute. That is absolutely insane. This is Crush Soda, a team that was looking to get the reverse sweep. But my goodness, the answer from Fiesta saying they are ready and they are willing to play this map. I mean, that's quite a statement getting it to 16, not losing a fight. Their first fight loss was there. And uh, Crush Soda took that personally. As you can see, the three and V1s just come out across the board. Keo just controlling those high grounds will eventually get forced into a bad situation of his own. But yeah, I mean, just a dominant statement. Again, controlling the map. And that was what I was afraid of was that Fiesta was going to just be able to play the map angles a little bit better than before. The Kraken falls off, but I don't think they're too weary about that right now. Here we go again. The Kraken is going to have to go for a little bit of a retreat for the Crab Tank. Doesn't I don't think they knew that Thunder was there because they got really pincered between Kyo and Thunder. So this this should be another advantage for Crush Soda. They should be able to take out, to get the advantage with it, especially with the Tactical. Allowing Kyo to try and get some more space, but taken out so darn quickly. I mean, it's just so, so quick. Uh, one down now for Fiesta, two down for Crush Soda. So... Again, just Fiesta winning these these moment-to-moment -moment fights, and that has been the difference maker, just finding and realizing that the picks are there, the 2v1s are there, and they'll call it out. Kraken now up again, and, and 
again, we're watching this Gallon player, but they continue to just find value and just be a nuisance in the back lines there. Does get punished before the Kraken is going, and that's huge. I'm, I'm so in love with this positioning from Fiesta. They're able to, like, just pincer Crush Soda down into this glass area. They forced two members down into this glass area and just obliterated them, making it a third with Wave, who's actually just further back, almost on, the, like, the snipe plat. This is, this is such a good... Uh, team coordination play from Fiesta, and they're showing they're showing that they want to make Grand Finals the easy way. Yeah, you can hear the communication coming in from them just as the callouts of just where can we get the 2v1s, where can we go, or where can we uh, make these picks work in our favor. They will go down three though, uh, and I mean that's a good that's a good uh, that's a good cooler. I mean that's it might be a little late, but it was still very good. It will get them back into the fight sooner and. Considering Crush Soda has been struggling to get map presence and map control, it needs to happen now. One, two minutes on the clock means there's probably about two, two to three fights left here, and they have not been building specials as quick as they need to to keep these fights going. So I'm really, I'm really concerned for them going into this. I would 100% agree with you with that, with that cooler placement, except it was in the other team from spawn. So um, yeah. no, none of Crush Soda was able no to get it. there. Nobody was able to get it. It was great. It was too. It was greedy for him. Yeah, it was. Well, he actually like, he didn't get it. He fell way for it. <laughs> Um, but anyway, this first checkpoint should be looking... It's under contestant now. Kia should be able to get it, especially with the Tactic Cooler coming out on tower. Every member of Crash Soda should be able to get themselves a nice little drink. Fiesta, oh, they're on the back and have to watch out for a crab tank coming out. What specials do they have to force Crash Soda off? Nothing. Just brute force, as we do see Wave going down. Kyo's probably going to be following this up pretty quickly if they go down on the Splatana Stamper or one of the splashes. Uh, Ghost is trying to keep you alive with a crab tank. The Splatana Stamper is going around with a Zipcaster. And that push looks to be done now. I mean, yeah, the flanks were eventually just kind of pushed onto him. The 1v1s continue to fall for Fiesta, and you really do have to be feeling yourself if you are Fiesta because you know you're winning those, and that is so crucial. Again, a pick from Crush Soda falls in the mid-40 seconds means that there's probably one fight left here, and Crush Soda needs to get control, and they just can't keep doing this while they're constantly down 3-4. Three to, three to four. This is not looking good for our NA heroes. It's, it's not looking good for them. They got close, but it's looking... Mighty fine devastating. They have a 2 2 trade, but you kind of you kind don't like that. At least you were able to get the Kraken down, but you did not get the Tri Strike out. The Tri Strike is still a GG special, ready to go. And there's a full checkpoint advantage for Fiesta going into the final 10 seconds here. We are looking for our overtime push. We are looking as no, Crush Order is over. getting blasted off the tower. It's just going to be Kyo and make that a wipeout. Fiesta, they have booked their ticket to Grand Finals of Squid Junction 40. I mean, it wasn't easy, but they managed to punch that ticket. And uh, kudos to Crush Soda. They really made them work for it. The the wider map really just did end up being the difference maker to me. Just in the way that the map was controlled, the space was controlled. And that dominant first push out of Fiesta was just so strong. You could see they didn't have a care. They knew they were winning those those 1v1s and those 2v1s and setting themselves up for success. I mean, that's the team play you expect out of this level. And I mean, if that's your... If that's who you have to play in the finals, man, I hate to see what's happening in the lower brackets. Yeah, honestly, it's it's gonna be crazy. And um, with that, our our winner side coverage is done. We will see everybody in grands. But before that, I would hundred percent recommend having both streams open. That being us yeah, here on go. Doppel Productions and Pro Char stream. Don't close out of the stream. Can't tell you to close out of the stream because you're gonna miss great action later. But you should go watch Pro Charis Room because he's got a great match going on right now. I don't know exactly what's happening, but I can see check marks in that lobby. So if you don't want to miss an action while we go to break, definitely go to Pro Chara and come back here as soon as that match is done. We'll see everybody on the other side of that break or in Pro Chara Stream.
Splatoon Stronghold. A stronghold for competitive Splatoon, providing resources to long timers and newcomers alike. If you're new to the competitive scene or still figuring out how to join, we've been getting started guide and plenty of other resources to help you in your journey. If you are a seasoned veteran, we still have plenty to offer. You can find and join tournaments as well as participate in our captain forum and find free agents and teams. Our mission is to make competitive Splatoon easily accessible to everyone. So what are you waiting for? Join the Splatoon Stronghold today.